I know one of the things that you talk about and that you believe heavily in, and I'd like to go a little more in depth on it to get a better understanding and share with the people who are going to be watching the videos. You talk about sales infiltration. Can you go into that theory? Sure. Uh, as, you, as you've already discovered, if you ask me any question, it comes with a story. I teach in, in stories. But uh, I was writing the closers part two longhand. I knew I was nearing the end of the book simply by the number of pages I'd written. And I was trying to think of a strong way to wrap it up. And a guy knocked on my office door, I, you know, private door inside the bigger office, but he had, he felt compelled to knock on the door to come in. And he came in, he had a tool belt on. And I said, and I'm trying to think of the last chapter and how to explain those subtleties and nuances that are hard to write in a book. It's, you know, that you can't learn how to ride a bicycle in a seminar and things like that. Uh, the, uh, I was trying to think of a way to explain to people what I really do because I've had people watch me in a sales situation and say, well, that was a laydown. I never heard, you know, the hard close. And I'd say, no, <laughs> you didn't know what to look for. While you, while you were figuring out where to put down your briefcase, I'd already closed the sale. And he said, this gentleman said to me, I said, how can I help you? He said, well, I'm here to check your filtration system. And a light went off. I thought, that's how to explain this. So I took him by the arm. I said, I'm really sorry. I know you work on a tight schedule, but you're going to have to come back tomorrow or the next day. Walked him to the door, threw the thumb bolt behind him, sat down and wrote for about the next three hours longhand. It was inspired writing, and I wrote down exactly what a master closer slash sales infiltrator, we call it now, what exactly what a master closer is, does, and how to be one. It starts on page 257 of the Closers Part 2. It's called, as you said, Sales Infiltration. And uh, it's easy for me to say it's the best thing I've ever written about selling. Uh, my ego kicks in when I tell you I really believe it's the best thing ever written about selling by anybody because it takes a nuance and a subtlety that's hard to explain and explains it in about 30, 40 pages. The system, let me give you just a capsule on, on top. It takes the salesman from being team A against the customer team B and creates synergistically team C a team that the customer and the salesperson, let's say I was trying to sell you a car, it puts you and me on the same team trying to solve a joint problem that we have and done properly and explains exactly what to say and do, uh, done properly in that, as explained in that chapter, it puts me in a position, uh, my closing rate with big ticket items is roughly, it's hard to keep track when you're working with different companies at different times, but roughly 86% of the time when I ask for an order, I get it. And, uh, but it's because I know I've done sales infiltration and I know when to ask for the order. And I'll give your listeners a magic close you didn't ask for. If you understand the material in the closer series and in particular in sales infiltration, it gives you the right to say to a customer and expect a positive response. David, based on what you've told me, here's what I suggest we do. Fill in the blank, you know, buy the mm -hmm. car, get the so-and-so, what, you know, whatever the thing is you're selling. Pause. Fair enough? Question mark. If you've gotten your, now that's, that's not a magic phrase and no close is a magic right. phrase if the front part wasn't done right. But I'm saying if you get yourself into the right position using the material in the closer series and in closers part two in particular, uh, when you ask that question, you'll experience an astoundingly high acceptance rate. And I don't, they say, well, when do you do it? I said, when the time is right. You know, with one person, it might be five minutes into uh, a situation. That'd be a little quick, but let's say five minutes in. And in other situations, it might be all day before you finally put aside the paperwork and say, all right, Dave, based on what we've discussed or what you've said, uh, here's what I suggest we do. Fill in the blank, car, house, 8,700 widgets, whatever. Fair enough. And if you got yourself in the right position, it is miraculous. So it sounds like it's a strong mix of being consultative and being a closer. Because if you're consultative and you're not closing, you're just educating. 
yeah, you're a wandering conversationalist. Uh, <laughs> the, the, if I sit down with something to offer you, I intend for you to buy it. Uh, because, you know, I've, I've pre-qualified you either before I got there or in general conversation or what have you. So um, as pleasant and charming as I can be, uh, I am there to get an order. And, and you're there to buy, and I'm going to do you a favor by giving you the, the information you need to make a positive decision.